الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى advise us in his glorious book in سورة النساء chapter 4 verse 29 that I started last week بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تأكلوا أموالكم بينكم بالباطل إلا أن تكون تجارة عن تراض منكم ولا تقتلوا أنفسكم إن الله كان بكم رحيما I talked last week about not consuming other people's wealth don't touch people's wealth unjustly that was the first order in that verse the second part of the verse Allah says and do not kill yourselves indeed Allah is to you ever merciful so Allah is telling us don't kill yourselves because he has mercy on you do not kill yourself out of despair do not commit murder do not take a life unjustly so this order has several meanings just like the first one there's like three different meanings we can get out of it is the first one is don't kill another person intentionally so you deserve to be executed you're killing yourself by killing another person so that's the first order from Allah because in Islam a killer the punishment the capital punishment for a murderer who does it intentionally is to be executed so don't kill yourself don't bring death upon yourself by killing another another person unjustly and if the killer does not kill because he's afraid to be punished and executed then both he will live and the the victim would live as well so this is a very good order from Allah says don't don't go intentionally kill somebody because you're gonna get it so that's the first meaning and that's very clear I mean when we understand that from the from the verses don't don't kill another soul and Allah when it says is mentioning it in the plural because the ummah is all one body if you kill another person you're hurting the ummah you're hurting yourself directly or indirectly so when he is addressing the believers as a group it's understood individually and collectively so the second meaning is do not take any actions that could lead to have somebody else get killed this is more unintentional um, we have to think about our actions you cannot just embark on an action without considering where what are the ramifications of that action and one example we see is you're driving somebody cuts you off take a deep breath and, and continue don't go into a road rage and cause somebody else to die from an accident just because you had a fender bender or or something trivial you have to think about what you're doing you know don't don't embark on actions that can threaten yourself or others so that's from from the other from the other meaning and when you kill when you have somebody else killed you're weakening the ummah i mean if you if you're in a in a, in a muslim society and and you kill somebody accidentally first you have to play, pay the blood money to the family and then you have to free a believing uh, person from bondage I mean it, it's like a slave but there's no slaves in these days so if somebody is in financial bondage or or physical bondage or whatever you free them and why do you free them because you took a member from the society that was productive you have to replace them with, with another another believing member in that society so do not First, so the first order, don't kill others intentionally because you're going to get it. And the second one is don't do anything that's going to get yourself or somebody else killed for, you know, for no good reason. And the third one, which is a big one, is don't kill yourself out of despair. Don't commit suicide, which is very common. The, more, the, the less faith people have, the more incidence of suicide goes up. I mean, there's a direct relationship between the two. When you look at people who don't believe in anything, the rate of suicide among them is pretty high. When you have people who believe in Allah, the rate is very low. So the one who commits suicide does not know Allah. 
Because if you knew Allah and you knew how, how much mercy He has, how much love He has for the believers, you'd never kill yourself. In, in Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah tells us about Nabiullah Yunus, Jonah, when he was swallowed by, you know, by the fish. And mention the man of the fish, meaning Prophet Jonah. When he went off in anger and thought that we would not decree anything upon him. And, you know, the, the story of Prophet Jonah is they, they threw him in the sea. So a, a fish, a whale or a big fish swallowed him. So he found himself in darknesses in the darkness of the belly of the fish, in the darkness of night, and in the darkness of the middle, you know, the middle of, of the, the ocean. And he cried in those darknesses, there is no deity except you, exalted are you. Indeed, I have been of the wrongdoers. You know, he, he cried, la ilaha, il, la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntum min al Can you think of a bigger calamity? I mean, look at, look at uh, the difficulties that you are experiencing in your, in your life. How does that man, you know, measure to someone who has just been swallowed by a fish in the middle of the sea in the middle of the night? How, how big is your problem compared to, to this person? Nothing. What are the chances of survival? You get swallowed by a fish in the middle of the sea in the middle of the night. What are your chances of survival? There are no cell receptions to call 911. You're in the bottom, you know, you're in out of nowhere. The chance of survival with human measures is zero. But Allah says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ That's the first part of verse 88. So we responded to him and saved him from the distress. Allah can do whatever he wants. The fish is in his control, the sea in his control, the night in his control, everything is in his control. He can do whatever he wants, and he is merciful with us, so never despair. So that's the first part, it says Allah said he was in this predicament, and we saved him from it. The rest of the verse is a divine law for all believers. وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ and thus, just like that, and thus do we save the believers. A believer never despairs. No matter how dark the night is, a believer never despairs because Allah is merciful. So we must believe in Allah and know that whatever happens to you of good or bad is for your own benefit. Allah sometimes inoculates you with difficulties to get you stronger. You can take a piece of metal, if you don't melt it and bang on it and turn it into steel, it'll break. It's, fra it's, it, it's fragile. It's not, it's not good. If you do not get exposed to diseases to get inoculated, you're not going to be healthy. So these, are, these difficulties have many purposes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings you know, to a believer. And you know, to strengthen you. And Allah Taala wants us as believers, as believers in Him and His mercy and His wisdom, to take these difficulties with perseverance, with patience, with sabr, with resolve. You take it and you go through it and you go through that difficulty and ask Allah to save you from it and do the best that you can to get out of it. That, that's what a believer does. A believer does not take a shortcut by killing himself and then deserving eternal, eternal punishment. So never despair of Allah's help. So in, in summary, consuming wealth unlawfully and taking a life unjustly, they're combined in the same verse. They're both detrimental to a society. If you cannot protect people's earnings and their lives, what kind of a society do you have? And killing, whether it is intentional or unintentional, is a very serious crime that must be avoided at all costs. And the, uh, the, the hadith in uh, Al-Bukhari, it's, it's an authentic hadith, and Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, reported that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, 
لا يزال المؤمن في فسحة من دينه ما لم يصب دما حراما. A believer continues to guard his faith and thus hopes in Allah's mercy. You, you have a lot of leeway in your faith. You have a lot of leeway in, in hoping for Allah's mercy so long as he does not shed blood unjustly. As long as you have not shed blood intentionally or unintentionally, you're, you're doing great. Everything else is good. Because if you steal something, you can always return it. If you take a life, you're not going to be able to... That's, that's an action you cannot come back from. So a smart believer does not get anywhere close to causing that. So observe Allah's commands so he may shower his mercy on you. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لكم فاستغفروه إنه لا فور رحيم